Okay, thank you very much for inviting me to give a presentation about some recent works, work we've done uh, within CSIRO um, over the last few months. And that comes to the obvious thing when we deal with uh, lithium, it's not measurable by XIF methods um, and it doesn't incorporate, because it's in pyroxene, it doesn't incorporate rubidium cesium, so you couldn't use these as a proxy as you could do if you deal with uh, mica-based deposits. And um, so we went the route of not, of, of course, uh, SWIR and near spectrometry is not so applicable. In this case, we we're dealing with a park scene. Uh, so we were investigating for some time uh, using a LIP system, so laser induced spectra spectroscopy, which essentially you're shooting laser at, as a rock or mineral and uh, you excite a, a plasma. And uh, when the, when uh, the effects from that will emit a characteristic light, you can detect with the uh, spectrometer and, uh, and then uh, apply some quantification methods to try and understand how much of your lith lithium is in it. So this would be a direct elemental analysis. Uh, and we looked also into uh, applying FDR spectroscopy in an analyzing for the mineral specifically. And, uh, this is what the instrument looks like. Uh, this is a Jillian handheld uh, FDR spectrometer. And uh, this will, will be able to measure from about 2,000 to 15,000 nanometers. And uh, in the few next slides, I'll show you a little bit on the outcome from our work. In, we're using a LIPS instrument and then a little bit more in detail what we worked on with the FDR. Um, so, on the right hand side, uh, what we had is a suite of samples and uh, two groups. One in blue, it's a five, mainly a five mineral uh, situation uh, with quartz, spodumene, albite, microcline, muscovite. And there's a subset of samples in, from this deposit we had and was mainly just quartz and spodumene. And the reason why we took it out or uh, separated them is that we could observe that the other ones uh, gave us a reasonable correlation between uh, the, the, chemical, the chemical lithium content versus a uh, LIPS element concentration. And this has something to do with the LIP spectroscopy is fairly sensitive to metrics, so you always need to matrix ma match that if you want to apply that. Um, but the, the interesting fact about uh, LIPS is that you can use it also in an uh, uh, imaging sense. And there's an example here. Um, and I forgot the scale to put on. I'm sorry for that. Um, but as you can clearly see, you can map uh, the lipidolite in this case, uh, because uh, lithium potassium, some k bar, and um, the dark color in the middle ground is uh, quartz in this, this instance. Uh, now I'd like to talk more about uh, the spectroscopic work we did. Uh, this is uh, a fairly typical spectrum of a uh, muscovite, which does have some uh, lithium in it. Um, and there's some specific features, like, like this one, and here's the 220 feature and uh, what we found that as muscovite increases lithium contact those features will shift and that's a characteristic uh, um, part which you can utilize in quantifying how much lithium is actually in, in the mineral. And now I want to show you two spectra for the uh, Spotchman on the top, that's pedalite, and that, that response is in the thermal range of the spectrum. And uh, our uh, approach to that was um, using a multivariate approach. Uh, we didn't, it's fairly similar to what John just was talking about. And um, uh, so this was our initial uh, study based on three different deposits. Um, so what we, de we did also is just directly link it to the uh, chemistry. So on, on, on the bottom that's chemically derived lithium values for the samples and on the top 
Now on the y-axis, you see the uh, modeled uh, lithium values from the spectra. Interestingly enough, uh, the model behind it is based on, uh, on two spotumin deposits, and the third one, the pink samples, are actually from a petalite deposit. Uh, interestingly enough, it, will, it works fairly well with the same model. Uh, and we took that further uh, to get a better fit of the data, and uh, so we used this, this Agilient model the only handheld instrument we can utilize. Uh, so here, this looks like, uh, is what it looks like, 150, uh, so 150 spectra from those measurements, and we didn't do much preparation of the data except uh, throwing out those obvious outliers, this one, this one up here. And we used uh, PLS models, and uh, our result is pretty, pretty good, 0.98. And we did some testing uh, what the error is, and uh, we come about a 0.07% lithium on, on your, and that is pretty much close to what you would get in a geochemical analysis. So this is, and I think uh, for this kind of application is pretty, pretty neat because you can use this instrument uh, like we did here on pulp material. Uh, you can use it in, in the field if you, if you do RC drilling. Uh, so, or you can set it up in your exploration, um, exploration camp in a, in a more lab style uh, situation. Uh, and in the next few slides I'll show you some uh, related work we did also in the lithium space, and that takes us uh, to the green bushes example. And uh, back in the late 70s, early 80s, um, some of our colleagues back then took some uh, sampling of uh, laterite, uh, more specifically the lateritic dory crust in the pizzolith material. And um, those, that, that data set was just recently reanalyzed geochemically, but also with the handheld um, FDR instrument. And here you can see just some um, initial work we did for various uh, element uh, minerals, uh, typically occurring in uh, in laterite material. And um, this is work really just the first attempt at this. And with more work into that, we certainly can improve those. Uh, estimates there. And what we're really interested in was is uh, where does the lithium, what happens to the lithium from your spotumin or pedalite or lapidolite when the regolith is forming. And because you can, you, there's some examples out there where you, where you have soil surveys or surveys going into satellite which show, show us nice anomalies on top of the system in the regolith. Uh, and we are interested where that is. So first of all, this is a SEM map. Um, of, uh, of a pizzolith, and uh, while the core here is more iron rich, and here at the, the metrics around this pizzolith are typically more silicon rich. And what we really want to interested in is the lithium, and that's my last slide for today, is on the top left. And this, is, this, is our, this is a laser ablation ICPM mass, uh, map, and my colleague um, will this after lunch we'll talk about a little bit more detail uh, about uh, how we how we utilize in this instrument but you can clearly see that the lithium in this example sits around the pizzolith in the matrix um, and at the moment we have ongoing work to uh, into the future in why that is and why not in the pizzolith and what's the story behind it and how mobile is lithium in the in the regolith so with that i'll leave you to it thank you very much